Dave, the issue of emergence has become a hot area of science, and I have been trying to find ways we can approach what, what is existence about. And we used to think that there's this reduction from biology has to be explained in terms of chemistry, chemistry and physics, and all the, all the way down. And yet emergence is something that is, is, a, is become important in being able to understand how these different levels work. How does a philosopher see emergence? Well, emergence has become one of the big buzzwords, I guess, in science and philosophy in the last couple of decades. Something new emerges from something more fundamental. So you know, life emerges from processing biological processes and matter. Consciousness emerges from the brain. I think, though, that you know, this term emergence really covers a multitude of sins, and you need to really you know, distinguish some quite different things that can go on when you talk about emergence. There's what we might call weak emergence, which is when you've got some complicated processing in matter, maybe some complicated dynamics among a bunch of, uh, a bunch of cells, and you get a complex pattern in that matter that you wouldn't have expected. And uh, phenomena emerge, like waves on the water. Somehow from these water molecules all jostling around, you get these, these waves, which you can you know, do. They come into the shore, you can surf on them, and so on. That's emergence. But it's not something fundamentally new. If you knew about the, f the fundamental structure of all the water molecules, you could ultimately predict there are going to be these waves. So that's weak emergence. And that's what you get in a lot of biology and dynamic systems and so on. The more radical kind of thing is what we might call strong emergence, when something totally new emerges from underlying processes. And that's what you seem to find, I think, especially with the case of consciousness. You put together a bunch of molecules in the neurons in the brain, you know, a billion of them, 100 billion of them, connect them up in the right way, and suddenly, somehow, you get this phenomenon of conscious experience. It feels like something from the inside, a totally surprising thing that you can never predict just from the organization of the neurons alone. Is the distinction between weak and strong emergence that in the former, in some future scientific era, a thousand years or a hundred, however many years in the future, one in principle can be able to describe it fairly rigorously, even though it may be very difficult. Whereas in strong emergence, no matter how far the science goes, it will be impossible in principle? So Laplace talked about the demon, the demon who knew all about the position of every last atom throughout the universe. In these cases of weak emergence, like the emergence of life from biology, if the demon knew all about the position of every last particle and did incredibly complex computations with his computer mind, he could figure out everything there is to know about life, about metabolism, about the processes that emerge. The difference with strong emergence, so you could give Laplace's demon every, all that information about every last atom, every last molecule. Laplace's de demon, still on that basis, could not tell you, could not figure out all the facts about consciousness. Indeed, there would be no reason for him to predict that consciousness should emerge at all, and yet it does. Is there anything else in the category of strong emergence other than consciousness? I think the only case of strong emergence that we know about is consciousness. And we only know about it because we experience it directly. You know, looking out at the world, we just see processes, you know, particles in the void, and things that weakly emerge from that. There may be some other things that emerge strongly from a material basis, but if so, I think we don't know about them. Uh, how, how about things on the social level, as individuals form groups and groups into society and society into culture? Does the, 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 the issue of emergence factor in those considerations, or is it just in the particle world? I think there is absolutely there is emergence of the social from the individual. Communities do things that are quite surprising. They, be, they behave in quite collective ways that you wouldn't predict on an individual level. They form mobs which flash into extraordinary bits of behavior that none of these individuals might have thought of doing in isolation. Mm -hmm. Still, I think in principle this is a case of weak emergence that could in principle be predicted from the dynamics of the individuals and the dynamics of their interrelations. Again, if you had your demon who knew all about every last process in those individuals' brains and the ways they interrelate, they could figure out the dynamics and they could say, okay, this is why you get that collective behavior. So I don't think it's fundamentally new, although it's extraordinary complex kind of dynamics that comes on top of this more basic Does process. the analysis of emergence, ag again, point to consciousness as something that is 
really special in our environment that we ought to pay even more attention to? Is, is that what follows from this analysis? I think this brings out something unique about consciousness. If you look at biology, you know, tell me enough about the underlying process, the mechanisms, I can tell you about the biology. I can tell you about the sociology. I could tell you about the structure of the economics. These are all just high-level processes built on low-level processes in the great chain of explanation in science. But the fact that consciousness is strongly emergent means it really sticks out like a, st like a sore thumb from this chain of explanation. We find this explanatory gap to consciousness. And this means, I think, it really needs special treatment in our theories, maybe as a fundamental element of the world. Now, if I were a philosopher who uh, did not agree with your arguments and I wanted to be particularly ant antagonistic to you, I would take what you just said about biology being a weakly emergent property, that if we knew enough about the underlying factors, we can predict biology, and go back, what, 100 years and say, if we were sitting here 100 years ago, people would have said the same thing about biology, that you needed a vital force because you, you can have chemical predictions, but once you have life and replication reacting to the environment in life's special way, it's impossible to predict from mechanical movement of forces and, 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 and particles, so we need a vitalistic force. But now, after we learned about DNA and everything, we don't need a vitalistic force, so now we've gone up one level to consciousness, but at some point, the same thing that happened to vitalism will happen to consciousness. It's tempting to think that the case of consciousness is analogous to the case of life, and it's eventually going to, consciousness will eventually go the same way as the vital spirit. But I think that's fundamentally wrong. The reason is, in the case of life, the phenomena that needed explaining were all ultimately behavioral and functional phenomena. How is it that living systems can do these amazing things? Grow, metabolize, reproduce. These were all questions about functions and mechanisms to perform them. Now, if you were a vitalist, 100 years ago, it was quite reasonable to think that it wasn't obvious that physical mechanisms could do these jobs. So therefore, you postulate the vital spirit to perform these objective functions. Turns out DNA could do it. The moment that happened, vitalism melts away. In the case of consciousness, though, it's quite different. We're not trying to explain some objective function that we can do. Let's concede. Take all the objective functions in the vicinity of consciousness, the behaviors. You know, I can point to you. I can talk about what's going on. I can integrate information and so on. I can perceive a stimulus. Say we can explain all of those functions, the things I do, with underlying neural mechanisms. There's this further question. Why is all that functioning accompanied by subjective experience? So all the discoveries you like about neuroscience and the mechanisms are always going to leave this further question of consciousness.